We finally got our hands on the brand new Sonos Beam Gen 2 and wow, do we have some thoughts. Hi guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds, an audiovisual retailer based in the UK, and today I'm back with a highly anticipated review that I know a lot of you have been waiting desperately for. We've finally, finally been able to test out the brand new Sonos Beam Gen 2, so make sure you're comfortable, grab a cup of tea, do whatever you've got to do to get ready, it's going to be a big one. We've got everything you need to know to decide if the Beam Gen 2 is the right product for you, including a close-up look at the brand new design, a deep dive on the introduction of Dolby Atmos, a sound demo comparing the Gen 2 with its predecessor, the Beam Gen 1, a comparison with the Sonos Arc, and so much more to find out what Sonos have done to their award-winning soundbar. Remember, if the Beam Gen 2 does turn out to be of interest to you, we have them available to order on our website, either in time for the release day on the 5th of October 2021, or next day delivery if that date has now passed. Now, don't forget, we also offer an extended six-year warranty on all Sonos products and a 30-day full refund policy if you find it's not the perfect fit in your home. Comment down below any thoughts you have on this new Beam Gen 2, and if you're into your music and movies, then don't forget to subscribe for plenty more content like this. Okay, enough of all that, let's get stuck into the details, starting off with a quick overview of the new Beam Gen 2. So the Sonos Beam Gen 2 is the second version of the multi-award winning Sonos Beam soundbar. It comes with an RRP of 449, a 50 pound increase on the first generation and is available in the same color choice of matte black or matte white. It's Sonos's compact soundbar option and the most affordable soundbar in their current lineup. This new generation of Beam brings home some huge enhancements to Sonos's popular soundbar, including support for 3D audio and Dolby Atmos, an upgraded design, a 40% faster processor, improved phased speaker array, improved clarity, and more. So why have they released it now? Well, the release of this new generation follows on from the launch of their more premium soundbar option, the Sonos Arc, which was released back in 2020 and coming in at double the price at 899. Now the Arc is a step up from the Beam, I'll address this further in the review, but its release has enabled Sonos to learn from the enhancements and improvements and adapt them for Beam's smaller form factor. Of course, following on from the past few years, there has been an increased number of people creating their own home cinema setups, along with plenty more new movie releases going straight to streaming. Now naturally this, along with advancements in technology, has led to increased pressure on soundbar manufacturers to step things up and offer an improved performance and enhanced cinematic experience. Okay, let's take a closer look at the design of the Beam Gen 2 then. So if you're already familiar with the Beam Gen 1, you'll notice it almost looks identical. I think if we actually got one behind the, we might as well just do a comparison now. So as you can see, now we've got them both together. We've got the Gen 1 here and the Gen 2. There's really not too much difference between the overall design. Now the Beam has been a hugely popular product for Sonos and they spent a long time perfecting the form and size, which perfectly complements either wall mounting or placing on a TV stand. It also fits in well as a more compact alternative to the wider Sonos Arc. Therefore, they decided to stick with this form factor and offer enhancements in other ways. Now, one of the main changes they have made is to the design of the grille. So it's now made from a more harder wearing polycarbonate material, which is the same material that we see used on the Sonos Arc, as opposed to this cloth fabric that we see here on the Gen 1 Beam. Now, the reason for this update is that it won't trap dust as easily as the cloth, and it's generally much easier to maintain. And I must say, the grill being solid really does help to make it feel like a much more premium, much more higher quality product, which you would expect, especially at this price point. Now, personally, I think this straightaway is a really nice step up from the first gen, and the white version is particularly striking. Now, you've got the same touch controls that we're used to seeing on Sonos products, being play, pause, skip track, previous track, volume controls, and a microphone privacy button for muting the voice assistant. Now, in terms of dimensions, we're talking 65.1 centimeters wide, 6.85 centimeters high, and 10 centimeters deep, exactly the same dimensions as with the Beam Gen 1. Obviously, a major point to note is that by keeping the dimensions the same, if you already have a Sonos Beam that's wall mounted, you can simply swap it out and use the same wall mount, which is a really big plus for sustainability and simplicity of upgrading if you decide to do that. 
So let's move on and take a look at the back of the Sonos Beam then. So on the back, we've got our power cove here and a join button, which is used for setting up the product and connecting it to your Wi-Fi. We've also got an ethernet port for creating a wired connection to your Wi-Fi if you want to, and new for the Gen 2, an HDMI eARC port, rather than the standard HDMI arc we saw on the Beam Gen 1, which means you're all set to receive Dolby Atmos when your Beam receives it. Now, I am going to cover connection quickly as this is by far the most common question you guys have been asking us. And unfortunately, I can't go through every single TV model and tell you if you'll be able to get Atmos, but I do have some general rules of thumb for you guys to take away. So first things first, if you have an eARC port, you will be able to get Atmos in 99% of cases. If you have a standard HDMI ARC connection, then it is possible to get Atmos. To know for sure, you need to check in the spec of your TV or reach out and speak to the manufacturer as it's up to individual manufacturers whether they enable support for it or not. If you're connecting via optical using the supplied optical adapter, then that's a straight no. In general, Atmos will provide a better sound through an eARC though, as it's not being carried by the Dolby Digital Plus connection. I hope that's cleared things up as much as possible. Now I'm sure most of you watching are already familiar with the Sonos setup and that you just need to connect the beam to mains power and it's a single HDMI cable to your TV. All of your other devices like Sky, Amazon Fire Stick, games consoles, anything like that will connect to the other HDMIs on your TV and the Beam will play audio from any source you're using at the time. But there is a new feature to the Beam Gen 2 that will make this even smoother to set up and that is the addition of NFC. So all you'll need to do is put your phone close to the Beam and it will set it up in the app. Setup was done in a max of four or five minutes and it's the quickest one we've done so far for a Sonos product. Right, okay then, let's take a look inside of the soundbar. Whoa, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm not actually gonna open this thing up, but I am gonna tell you guys what's inside. So you've got exactly the same drivers as were in the Beam Gen 1. In total, you have five Class D amplifiers that are powering four full range woofers and a single tweeter. You'll notice that N2 speakers are both angled out 45 degrees to give you the widest possible soundstage from a compact soundbar. You've also got three passive radiators for deep but clean bass and then five far field microphones so that if you choose to use the voice assistant, it should hear your voice nice and clearly. Now, I know what you might be thinking if they've not changed any of the speakers, there aren't any upwards and sideways firing drivers and there's a plastic top, how on earth are they now able to give a good 3D audio and Atmos effect? Well, first things first, I just want to cover what Dolby Atmos is. So Atmos is an audio codec and sound technology. It's a huge step up from two channel audio and a step up again from Dolby Digital, which was supported by the Beam Gen 1. Atmos essentially puts you in the center of your content and creates a 3D surround sound effect, which is object based rather than channel based. So this gives producers more control and freedom over what you hear and means that audio you experience can replicate what you're seeing on the screen. So for example, if a helicopter flies overhead, you'll feel the sound travel around the room to replicate it. If you've not experienced that once before, I would highly recommend visiting the Dolby website and doing a demo with a pair of headphones. It really is a fantastic step up in audio performance and immersion. Now, traditionally, Atmos utilizes upwards and sideways firing drivers to direct audio into those spaces, and this is what you have with the Sonos Arc. However, the Beam Gen 2 doesn't have upwards or sideways firing drivers, so how exactly is this done? Well, first things first, Sonos have added a new processor which is 40% faster than the one in the Beam Gen 1. This new chip has enabled Sonos to create two new audio paths for a virtual surround sound experience to make five audio paths in total, compared with three on the Beam Gen 1. These two new audio paths are dedicated to processing surround and height information to make audio more spacious and provide a separation between ear level and overhead audio. All of this is achieved using psychoacoustic technology, which essentially tricks your mind to make you feel like sounds are coming from above and around you. All of this we have been testing thoroughly, so hold on for our experience on how this works. Along with the support for Dolby Atmos for movies and TV, Sonos have also announced that the Beam Gen 2 will support Amazon Ultra HD and Dolby Atmos Music. This isn't available now for launch, but when it comes, we will be able to experience the highest quality lossless audio up to 24-bit 48 kilohertz with Amazon Ultra HD, while Dolby Atmos Music is a big step up into spatial audio and a 3D listening experience. And finally, after a long, long, long time, 
of customers asking, Sonos have announced they will be offering support for DTS by the end of this year. Yes, guys, it is really happening. DTS is coming to Sonos. This will not only be available on the Beam Gen 2, but all Sonos home cinema products running on the S2 app. We'll make sure we have a video covering this in more depth when it actually launches, but for now, it's positive news. Back to the Beam then. Sonos have also stated that they have worked on their center channel clarity, which is crucial in a great home cinema experience, covering all of the vocals and the main storytelling of your content, which is what keeps you engaged and hooked. They haven't been specific on how this works. So again, something our team have been testing extensively over the last few days. So that's all of the in-depth information on the new changes to the Beam Gen 2 and what they've set out to achieve. But let's now cover how well this actually works in real life. We've been testing this Beam Gen 2 extensively in the office over the last few days with a wide range of music, movies, TV shows, gaming, and much more. So I've got a lot of thoughts now, before I delve into the difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 for Atmos content, which will include a sound test, I want to first discuss our testing of non-Atmos content, as this is just as important as Atmos content, as not all content is available in Atmos, and not all of you can access Atmos with your TVs. First things first, the absolute standout improvement is the center channel clarity. Sonos made a statement on boosting clarity and working with Oscar winning sound engineers who help fine tune the beam, but that doesn't really say a lot. And we're all kind of thinking like, what does that actually mean? However, the immediate thought we all had on all content that we tested was the clarity of the vocals have stepped up to a completely different level. It doesn't overpower the rest of the content, but it definitely cuts through the noise and helps keep you hooked in. You hear the nuances and details that might have been missed in the Gen 1. For us, center channel clarity is one of the most important factors in a soundbar as it's at the core of the storytelling, keeping you engaged and focused on what you're watching. Everything else is largely the same as the Gen 1, but this clarity increase alone is a step up in our opinion. So we then moved on and tested the Beam Gen 2 with Atmos content, and this really brought all of the new improvements to the forefront. Now, I know you're all desperate for a sound test and demo of this to hear the differences for yourselves. So I'm going to play an Atmos enabled trailer firstly on the Beam Gen 1, which will be reduced down to Dolby Digital 5.1, and then on the Beam Gen 2, which will offer support for Dolby Atmos. However, I have to make a big, big disclaimer here. You are not going to get the feeling of true Atmos watching this via YouTube, on your phone, through headphones, etc. We're also recording in two channel via our binaural microphone, which has been positioned at the listening height at the appropriate distance from the TV. So that's something to just bear in mind. However, I want to include a comparison as hopefully you will get some sense of the difference and be able to pick up these nuances and enhancements. If the sound test doesn't play, then I'm really sorry. It might have been chopped out for copyright reasons, but we've tried our very best to do what we can for you guys. I'll give you my thoughts afterwards, but for now, pop some headphones on and let us know what you think. Where do we start? So I hope you all enjoyed that sound test. Now again, the detail and vocal reproduction are a huge standout feature, which we noticed immediately with all content, but you now add to that increased immersion from Atmos. I think going from 5.1 to Atmos reiterates how much of an improved codec Atmos actually is. And the overall experience of the Beam Gen 2 in Atmos was really impressive. Admittedly, we've been very skeptical on how well the virtual surround sound and 3D effect would work without any dedicated upwards or sideways firing drivers, but this well outperformed our expectations. 
I think the main note was how wide and detailed the soundstage really felt. There's a clip at the start of Raya, which I'll include here. Hopefully it shows you the sound continues well past the parameters of not only the soundbar, but the TV filling right up to the width of the room. You'll notice that the beam does look very compact under our 65 inch TV, but the sound feels like it's coming from far, far wider. The virtual height channels also did a really good job and helicopters felt like they were going above the TV. We then tested the Beam Gen 2 out with a variety of music, including some spatial audio music on Apple Music. Again, it was the clarity that took the center stage here. Instruments and vocals sounded really pronounced, and of course, any spatial audio tracks made the most of the new upgrades with the Gen 2 for a more lifelike, rich, and immersive experience. Now, there are no changes in terms of bass compared with the Sonos Beam Gen 1, but on the whole, the bass on the Beam is good. It's not blowing you away, but it's good for a medium-sized room. If you're listening to a lot of bass-heavy tracks or you want the deep rumble of bass when you're watching a movie, then you might want to consider adding a sub or perhaps looking at the Sonos Arc. Speaking of the Arc then, let's chat about how the two compared in our testing. On the whole, we were really impressed with how close the Beam Gen 2 comes to the experience you get with the Arc. I would say there is a clear jump in performance between Beam Gen 1 and Arc, but Gen 2 has closed that gap quite considerably. However, even though we were impressed with the virtual Atmos on the Beam Gen 2, it's not ever going to be the same as having dedicated drivers and the Arc does do a better job, particularly on the height channels. In Le Mans 66, there's a moment where they speak through a tannoy and on the Arc, it feels like that's coming from right above you. But on the Beam, the sound did sound like it's coming from higher than the TV and the separation was great, but it's not quite the same. So we have noticed a difference on things like that. The bass is also still the main differentiator. Base on the Arc is more powerful and does offer the experience bass enthusiasts would be looking for. Some of you have also asked us to test how the Beam Gen 2 sound compares with the older Sonos Play Bar. A lot of people will still have their Play Bar and for good reason, because it was one of the best selling soundbars of all time. So your wish is our command and we put these two to the test. For us, the Play Bar does offer a deeper sound and the bass has more of an impact. So again, if you listen to lots of bass heavy music in a bigger room or you've got a bigger space to fill, then we suggest sticking with the Play Bar. However, if you're looking for an upgrade, you will find that you get more detail and clarity from the Beam Gen 2. You're obviously also accessing support for Atmos 2, which will help deliver a wider soundstage and more immersive listening experience. Right, now before I get too carried away with comparisons, there are still a few key points that I want to cover with the Beam Gen 2. I'd like to touch on True Play tuning, which I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of, but it is particularly important in a home cinema setting because there's a lot of differences in the sound depending on where you place the soundbar, like if you're wall mounting it, whereabouts you position it, how large the room is, etc. The Beam will make some very important spectral corrections when you do the True Play tuning phone dance. Spatial correction is a very difficult thing to get right, so you'll find that if you take a soundbar and plug it in straight out of the box, it will sound different room to room. So True Play is a big advantage, especially with the addition of Atmos. What's also nice is that you have speech enhancement and night mode options in the Sonos app. So if you'd like to make the speech even clearer, you can tap on this speech bubble icon. Obviously we've highlighted that the vocals are already incredibly clear and we actually preferred the listening without having this setting on for a more authentic experience, which is strange because on the Gen 1, we had the speech enhancement on most of the time. For night mode, if you're listening late at night and don't want to wake anybody up in your home, simply tap this moon icon and it will suppress the more imposing sounds in the content while enhancing the quieter sounds. Now I know a lot of you out there are using your soundbar and TV setup to provide the audio for your gaming. So the addition of the HDMI eARC connection also helps out here. This Beam Gen 2 can now receive and decode even more surround sound formats from your games consoles. So Dolby Atmos, obviously, but also Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, uncompressed LPCM, and of course, DTS later this year. The addition of the 40% faster chip will also improve performance for gaming and there is a dedicated 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio which will connect to surrounds or a sub and that will ensure that there is minimal lag when gaming or just when watching movies. I've done a bit of testing in gaming and have found that the added immersion from the Beam Gen 2 and the clarity is really something special. Due to its compact size and these enhancements, I can see this being a very, very popular soundbar for gamers. So, should you upgrade from the Beam Gen 1 
to the Beam Gen 2. I would say if you do want to make the upgrade, the main thing you'll notice is a better overall sound quality because of that Titan center channel and extra clarity. However, the most notable differences are going to be when you're watching Atmos content. Ask yourself the question, are you going to watch a lot of Atmos content specifically? Can your TV support Atmos? If yes, the Beam Gen 2 would be quite an upgrade for you. But if not, and your TV can't support Atmos, you're not going to notice a major step up for your content. Of course, you will be future-proofing yourself for when you upgrade your TV or when Atmos content becomes the norm. But until then, I still wouldn't be rushing out in those circumstances. The Beam Gen 1 is still a very capable soundbar. Of course, the choice is yours to make. We're just here to offer a soundboard and help you make a more informed decision. If you do decide to upgrade, the beauty of the Sonos ecosystem is that of course you can add to it over time. So you could move the Gen 1 beam into a secondary space and have a new Gen 2 beam in your main living room. Right, next question then, Beam Gen 2 or Sonos Arc? Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will be doing a full comparison of these two soundbars. So make sure you subscribe for that or check the description below as I'll link that when it goes live. Now your room size and TV screen size are also a big part of the story. You'll need to ask yourself, can the Arc fit in your room and amongst your furniture, or can you at least wall mount it? The Arc will look better under a larger TV, say 65 inch and above, whereas the Beam is a more compact product than the Arc, so is for more compact rooms. Due to its more compact size, it can pretty much fit anywhere in your home where you want to supercharge your TV's internal speakers. The Arc, on the other hand, is more suitable for your dedicated TV rooms. Truthfully, we can't believe how close this Gen 2 is pushing to the performance of the Arc, and we can actually see that this might end up taking some sales from the Arc when customers demo both products, especially since the price rise of the Arc from 799 to 899. I think people will be really tempted by this second generation of the Beam. I think the decision between the two will come down to budget, room size, and how important base is for you. As for us, that's the real differentiator now. So is it worth adding a sub and surrounds? Now, this is a very interesting question. And we actually sat down and had a chat with Jeff Dadiri and Sonos is Vice President of Product Programs and the Head Designer on the Beam Gen 1, and he had some great advice on this. This comes back to the psychoacoustics that I spoke about a little earlier. So if you were to add two rears, could be two ones, two one SLs, two fives, or even two speakers powered by the Sonos amp, the beam will automatically adjust and won't use the two arrays for surround. Instead, the processors in the rears will take over the surround channels, freeing up the processor on the beam to maximize the height channels instead. A similar thing happens when you add the sub. So the sub will take over the base from the beam where it's best suited to handle it. It's easy to forget that in a full surround system, you have four processors working together to create a cinematic experience, which naturally will enhance the experience. Now, a few of you have asked, should you go for the Arc on its own or for the Beam and two 1SL speakers as rears, as they come in at a very similar price point, 899 and 807? This is a great question. And first things first, consider your room. See whether you have the space for an arc. See if you've got the space for rears, as this will play a big part in your experience. If you think you could accommodate either, then it comes down to personal preference. All things considered, the arc is a better experience, and if you have the money, then you should go for it. But adding surrounds to the beam for a comparable price point does put a spanner in the works. Now, personally, I would go for the beam and two 1SLs with the introduction of Atmos and that enhanced clarity. But if I had a bigger TV and room, I would probably still go for the arc. Now it is worth noting though that I would have gone for the Arc over the Beam Gen 1 and SL combination. Okay, on to the main pros and cons of the new Sonos Beam Gen 2 soundbar. Let's look at the positives first. Firstly, the Gen 1 Beam was a fantastic product already, so any upgrades will be well received. The Gen 2 was certainly a feature-packed soundbar with voice control, touch controls, access to the Sonos app, etc. The support for Dolby Atmos is a big, big step up from the previous model and brings that more advanced technology into a more affordable Sonos soundbar. The upgraded grille is an improvement to the overall design in terms of practicality and aesthetics. And finally, that center channel clarity has been the most pleasantly surprising upgrade for us. Now, no product is perfect and there are definitely a few negatives to mention. So firstly, there is only one HDMI port. This won't be an issue for a lot of you, but a second HDMI port would have been nice for those with lots of different bits of tech. Like other Sonos TV speakers, there is no Bluetooth option, which may be a downside for some, but I would say I personally wouldn't use this feature if it was included as Wi-Fi streaming offers a far better experience in a home environment. 
And lastly, without the upwards firing drivers, it is a virtual surround sound experience. Of course, we felt this did a great job in our testing, but it's not quite the same as having dedicated upwards firing drivers like you have in the Arc. So what did Sonos do then? Well, they took an already popular product and made it even better using a combination of tuning, processing power and psychoacoustics. This is a great example of a manufacturer upgrading a successful product without losing its identity. For us, this is a much bigger step up from the Beam Gen 1 than we were expecting, which comes not only from the support for Atmos, but from that center channel clarity. Going off previous Sonos product generation upgrades, such as the Sonos 1 and Sub Gen 2 to the Sub Gen 3, we maybe weren't as hyped for this release as we should have been, so this one has taken us by surprise. Ultimately, we can't tell you if this product is right for you, but hopefully we've helped give you an insight into what's new, helped you weigh up your options and whether that's upgrading or purchasing a new soundbar. We appreciate sometimes you need to experience products like these in your own home. So if you feel like this product could be for you, then make the most of our 30 day listen better promise, which gives you that opportunity to test it out for yourself. And if it's not right, then send it back to us for a full refund. We do think you'll love this product if you decide it's right for you, but you've got that reassurance if it's not. We will be doing a comparison of other soundbar options in the sub 500 pound market very soon, which should be very interesting as the Beam Gem 1 was market leading in this category. Comment below any models you think we should be including in that. But that brings us to the end of this review, guys. I hope you found this one helpful. If you did, then please make sure you give it a like. And if you're a fan of all things audiovisual, then hit that subscribe button to see more from us and join our community. Make sure you're also following us on Instagram as we post loads of behind the scenes content on there, Q and A's and all that sort of thing. So you guys can stay right up to date with us. Make sure you comment down below any thoughts you have on the new Sonos Beam Gen 2. We'd really love to hear what you guys think. If you're interested in the Beam, then head over to our website to check it out. Don't forget we offer that six year warranty and 30 day returns policy. Our staff are also more than happy to help you out with any questions that you might have. So make sure you get in touch. That's all from me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.